actually. Good evening and Happy New Year because this is the first uh, uh, Sutta discussion we will be having uh, in the next in, in, in this year 2020. Okay, so today's topic is going to be seven real vows V O W S, not W O V S. V O W S, seven real vows to become a Sakha. Sakha is, a, is, is the head god, lord of Devas. According to the uh, Vata Pada Sutta. So uh, the Sutta is mentioned in the Sangyutta Nikaya 11.11 uh, uh, reference. Uh, so uh, this is about how one can become a Sakha, like, a, like the head deity. Now this is not a normal, uh, you know, uh, topic that we've been discussing in the last few years, last year, uh, because it's about the Sakha and how can one become, uh, how can one become the best Deva? Because there are six heavens in the Buddhist uh, cosmology. Cosmology means the study of the world in the Buddhist teachings, the universe. Uh, anyone has heard about this name? Yeah, I think you know. Uh, Sakha, Sakha, Sakha Devi, so Sakha. Uh, so Sakka is the head head deity, the lord of the deities uh, in the heaven, uh, in the Buddhist teachings. Now we're going to learn what the present Sakka, uh, the god Sakka, uh, did to become the Sakka. So they are relevant to uh, any other uh, person so that they can practice if they want to be a Sakka. So before we're gonna talk about uh, what he did and what we can do, as he sa as he says, uh, I would like to talk about this person, this uh, deva. So in the Buddhist cosmology, there are thirty one places where beings can be reborn. Like so, we are beings, right? We are beings in the sansara. So we are supposed to be reborn. We have, we're gonna die right away we're gonna be reborn, right? So nobody talks about we are reborn. They all uh, worry about we die. <laughs> In the Buddhist teachings, we die and then we are reborn uh, without an interval, okay? So, so people who have different thoughts, who have, uh, uh, you know, some cluttered thoughts, they think, no, 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 there is an interval. We call it a antarabha. But in the Theravada Buddhist teachings, we don't find there is an interval right away that being is reborn. But based on where that individual is reborn, somebody can say, this is a bad place, this person uh, was reborn. So based on, the bad, based on the transition from the bad place again to the good place, they could say it's an interval, kind of an antara, but other than that, there is no uh, interval uh, period for some uh, for any being to be reborn. So, anyways, so we all die and then we all are reborn. We all know we all know we all die, but no, uh, not many people understand we are reborn right away. So, where are we reborn? We are reborn in one of the thirty-one places. So, in that uh, teaching, we understand there are four uh, hells uh, and then six heavens. Uh, and then uh, this human, uh, uh, you know, world, it could be many, but he, uh, places where humans, humans live, it is taken as one. And then there are 16 uh, material Brahma worlds. And on the top, the very top, there are four immaterial Brahma worlds. So, in, so that way, there are 31 places. Now, the discussion is about one of the heavens. Now we talk about six heavens in this, uh, you know, description. Uh, although the heaven that the god Sakha lives is, is somewhere in between, but it is called, this is the, the best and the most uh, heaven uh, where the gods or the deities have connection with the human, human world. So that the head god or the lord of uh, that particular heaven, devas of that particular heaven, 
uh, are regarded in high uh, consideration in, in many suttas. And there is one area, section of the Sangyutta Nikaya, uh, where we can see all the suttas are about the goat Sakkar. Because he, uh, he has come to see the Buddha, uh, or monks talk about him, or Buddha himself talks about him. And in the Buddhist teachings, we know uh, he uh, is the head god. At the same time, he is married to the, the daughter of the chief of the Asura world. Now, one of the hells is Asura. We call him. Uh, the hells are like Apayas, uh, Naraka, uh, Animal Kingdom, and then the uh, Praetors. Uh, so, one of them is Asura. So usually we know there are fights between uh, uh, the heaven, heavenly devas and the asuras. But anyways, uh, we can see the head court called Sakka married to the daughter of the uh, chief of the asura world. Her name is Suja. So uh, she is the daughter of the uh, chief of the asuras called Vepachitti. Now we know in the in the Chanda Parit and the Surya Parit in the uh, chanting book, we know what happens. Uh, the Vepachitti Asura is, is so powerful, he eclipses the moon as well as the sun. I don't know, I mean, uh, how do you call in the better terms uh, this thing, eclipse? Of lunar the, eclipse. A lunar eclipse, eclipse and the solar eclipse. Sorry, those are the proper words. So the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse, although you see it as a, uh, you know, uh, how do you call like a scientific thing, in the Buddhist teachings, uh, we find out in two suttas, in the Chanda Paritta, the moon is eclipsed by the by the Asura called Vepachitti, the father-in-law of, of the god Sakha. And then uh, what happens? Uh, the moon is released after the after a request of the Buddha, and also the sun is released after the after a request uh, uh, through the Buddha. So, anyways, they have been uh, they have been given some uh, uh, how do you call? There is a better name uh, uh, in the philosophy, uh, anthropomorphism. That means like. Uh, the natural things have been personified, personifies. Let's say the wind, it is just the wind, but they call there is a God inside, right? And there's rain, uh, they call it's not just the uh, uh, rain, there is a God inside. So uh, they uh, put all these uh, natural things into anthropomorphism as a, as a philosophical concept. So anyways, I was trying to talk about the god Sakra, uh, or call uh, the head god in the uh, Tavatinsa heaven. So he, he lives in the Tavatinsa, in Sinhala we call Tautisa. Okay. And together with the Brahma, one of the very famous, uh, you know, uh, persons in the Buddhist teachings, Sakra, the god Sakra is considered as a Dharmapala. So Dharmapala is a Pali, but Dharmapala is a protector of the Buddhist uh, order. So, so Sakka is considered to be someone who protects the Buddha Sasana. Buddha Sasana means the order of the Buddha. So he is he's a helper. He is he's really a helper to the Buddha Sasana. So anyways, there are a lot of other things. Uh, we will talk about them if we get more time. Now, uh, let's take a look at our, what the Sutta says. So Sutta name is Satta Vata Pada Sutta. So Satta is seven. Vata Pada means vows. So the seven vows anybody can do to become a Sakka, a future Sakka. Uh, keep in mind, uh, sak, like no Sakka is also a mortal. So he dies one day, right? So there is another Sakka. Uh, you know, another uh, deputy devata, deputy deva becomes a sakka. So it's like that. So there is no one uh, head god continues uh, forever uh, because he is also under this uh, 
uh, anicca which is called change right so uh, when the when the, uh, the the sakka passes away then the deputy uh, god deity of that heaven tavatinsa becomes the sakka so this sakka is the sakka who was at the buddha's time okay at savatthi because in the past when sakka lord of the devas was a human being he adopted and undertook seven vows by the undertaking of which he achieved the status of sakka what were the seven vows sat sakkasa bikkave devana mindasa pubbe manusa bhutasa satta vata padani samattani samadinnani ahesu yesan samadinna samadinnatta sakku sakkatta ngajaka katamani satta padavatani what were the seven now now buddha uh, says to the monks how he achieved uh, the status of uh, sakka the first one yava jeevang mata petti bharo assan as long as i live may i support my parents so any future sakka <laughs> if someone wants to become a sakka in the future uh, so they can start from this vow as long as i live may i support my parents so taking care of the parents that's the first thing in becoming no not like a normal deva did he the head god lord of the devas so one has to uh, first start from supporting their parents now this is a very a uh, tricky point how do you support your parents as he you might be at different stages of your life you might be a student then you listen into your parents right uh, you care in them uh you loving them all the time and when you are self supported when you are when you can afford when you see what other things you can do right so all in all supporting your parents when they die you cannot think that okay now it's all done you can you have to still give them good karma buddha says when every uh, parent passes away their kids have a role to uh share good karma with their parents although they pass away nobody else giving them merits right only their kids have to do it right nobody else uh, does that so then uh, whether your parents are alive whether they are already gone you have a way to support them okay so taking care of your parents if they are alive uh if they are already gone then you can share the good karma you do uh, after you doing any good karma you can think about visualize your parents may my parents share all the good karma that i enjoy today may they be happy and peaceful so and so forth so starting from this vow as long as i live may i support my parents okay the second one yava jeevam so yava jeevam is as long as i live yava jeevam khule jetta pachai asa as long as i live may i respect the family elders I don't know how it works in the different cultures, but in the Sri Lankan culture, we know, and in most of the Asian cultures, uh, we know that uh, taking care of uh, not not just taking care of like respecting your uh, family elders, uh, you know, respect could be uh, listening to them, uh, just uh, could be di- could be uh, different at different times. But anyway, anyways, you have a respect, and uh, you are at a point you. Uh, willing to take advices whenever you think they are okay it doesn't mean you have to uh, say yes to all those people but you are regarding them as being people who can really give you an advice so you uh, you give a special uh, you know consideration for those family elders uh, who can really know who you are and where you come from so respecting uh, you know Uh, the family elders okay the third one yava jeevan sanha vacho asan this is one of the very off coded uh, wow that we see in most of the places where if one wants to be a deva like a normal deva one must be like this as long as i live may i speak gently so gentle speech is one of the key requirements in becoming a deva like a normal deva as well so Uh, people who speak very soft people who speak very gently they have a better chance 
so that's a really good thing like uh, i think when you when we talk not just the way you talk but the consistency of the words right sometimes uh, what words you use to talk about sometimes when you are in a conversation you know these are these could be the better words these are a little bit hard on other people culturally sensitive you know you filter in them uh, what could be the best way that i can use this topic conversation a number of words right uh, really careful about uh, the gravity of your words and the gentleness and uh, the impact on the uh, you know listeners so that's one of the key requirement in becoming a no even a normal deva because i have seen in other verses like in dharma pada we know satchang bani na kuchaya tacha pasmin piyajito in that uh, conversation too we find out use of gentle words right soft words everybody like even the animals like right you you calling a cat or a dog you know like they 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 like to get call in a in a better way not like <laughs> there are different uh, ways of calling uh, even though animals too they get scared right i think i think people get scared when you don't uh, speak gently don't know what's going to happen right so use of gentle words that's the third wow the fourth one yeah this is not just for one time okay yava jeevam as long as i live until i die may i speak gently yava jeevam apisuna vachu asan now it's also a part of the uh, speech as long as i live may i not speak divisively oh, we call it in pali apisuna uh, vacha you know like now people in today's world they talk uh, Uh, divisively right they talk something here and they uh, talk something there they talk something in the presence of you they talk they speak uh, good in front of you they uh, speak bad uh, behind your back behind you so uh, people do that for different reasons right but a person who wants to be a deva now in this case who wants to be the head god called sakka never ever think about any speech regarding uh this how do you call uh divisive speak speech always trying to talk the truth at the same time trying to be in the reality also be uh, being smart all the time you know being smart and then uh, talking to other people is a is a is a is a skill right sometimes uh, even you know this is the truth but you can't talk it's not uh, still the good time so you are smart you know when to talk where to talk at the same time we don't need to pass to information to two people right we don't want to uh, see commotion fight between two people among many so uh, uh not speaking divisively okay speaking to uh speaking to uh connect good people speaking for unity speaking for uh speaking for um, harmony speaking for the well-being of everybody so that's that's the so i mean this includes uh, discrimination uh, discriminator uh, like uh, derogatory speech uh, hate speech right uh, that all includes looks like buddha talks about everything at that time <laughs> okay so as long as i live may i not speak uh, divisively that's number 4 number 5 the wow yava jeevang vigatamala macherena chetasa agaram ajja vaseya mutta chago payata pani vasagratu yache yogu dana samvibhagatu a lot of pali words but they all talk about one important thing let's let's see the english translation as long as i live may i dwell at a home with a mind devoid of the stain of stinginess freely generous open handed delighting in dana devoted to charity delighting in giving and sharing it's really important now uh, i think in the buddhist teachings we we all know the first thing everybody has to practice is dana but not the last thing not the uh, middle thing dana has to be practiced consistently at different times whenever uh, you can uh, so dana is a very important thing but but not a lot of people know why they need to 
do that? Why they need to uh, be in the generosity? The main thing why we we why we want to uh, involve getting involved in the dana is to divide up the stinginess. We call there are two Pali words uh, that we see regarding the problem with the dana. There's, there's no problem with the dana, but problem with the purpose, problem that one needs to give up in giving dana. That's loba and machari. So loba is the greed, like a normal greed. And machari is stinginess. Now, I, I see this is very different from greed. Now, one becomes greedy for oneself. My stuff, I, my, me stuff, right? Money, people, things you like, like your normal, personal uh, the stuff. And there's another word called visamaloba, unwanted, unrighteous uh, greed. That means you greedy for other people's stuff. So you are taking another step ahead, which is really bad. So loba and visama loba, they are two uh, kinds of uh, loba. Uh, loba simply means <clears throat> that you are greedy for yourself, like your stuff that you already, uh, you know, acquired. But when it comes to visama loba, that means you are greedy for other people's stuff, that you don't have any control over it, but you are very greedy about other people's stuff. So. There are two kinds of lobe. But the type of the problem that Buddha talks about in becoming, if one wants to become a, become the head god, is not uh, any of those two. It's about machari. We, we take it as stingy. I don't know, I mean, how it is uh, translated in the English uh, literature language. But stinginess, we know kind of a sense. In the Pali teaching, stinginess basically, machari basically means you are not giving anything because you can't see, you can't, uh, you can't take the feeling of happiness when other people enjoy what you give. That's a big problem, right? So let's say you have something, uh, one might be greedy for not giving it, but what if someone is not greedy about it, but someone doesn't like other people use it it's gonna be a big problem so that's called machari now uh, the fifth vow uh, for anyone to uh, become a sakka good sakka is we have to have a mind divide sorry devoid of the stain of stinginess so we should be very we should be able to be happy whenever other people enjoy the comforts of the thing that we that we give now, uh, it also relates to what we give, right? Let's say you can give things that are left over, uh, worn out, torn out stuff, right? Right? But what if that you buy something really new, brand new stuff? I mean, for the most part of your generosity, but sometimes you can donate stuff that you already use. But for the most of the time, when you think about my dana, good stuff, new stuff, brand new stuff, if you can give it. Then the moment you think about, okay, I'm going to spend my hard-earned money on brand new stuff. Oh, so I have a lot of craving. My craving comes up, right? So you have a very struggle. That's the struggle that we want. And then to defeat that struggle by giving it to someone. And I'm, or you are trying to minimize giving up, uh, you know, uh, any thoughts uh, of, uh, you know, stinginess. Uh, and plus uh, the greed, so basically stinginess, then you are giving the best dana according to the Buddhist teaching. Basically, when it comes to generosity, Buddha always says, try to have a mind devoid of stinginess. Freely generous, so you are very freely generous. Open-handed, so your hands are not closed. Whenever you feel you can give, whenever you find an opportunity, you think, okay, I'm going to give this to someone. I mean, I mean, you have to find out uh, how you can uh, survive. Uh, I mean, when you know you can survive with this much of thing, this many of things, then you can always think about if there is an opportunity comes up, I'm going to uh, give it up on those things. I don't want to attach to the stuff. So that's the, that's the best type of generosity. Delighting in uh, relinquishment. Delighting. So 
you have to have a delight in dana right some people they do it for uh, different reasons right some some may do for political reasons some may do for future life reasons some may do for uh, cultures some may do for uh, different other religious purposes but basically if you have a mentality that i am delighted not just happy delighted in giving this that's the best type of uh, dan devoted to charity so always into charity delighting in not even in giving but also in sharing giving and sharing so so anyway so this uh, fifth vow has something to think about as long as i live may i dwell at home with a mind devoid of the stain of stinginess freely generous open handed delighting in relinquishment devoted to charity delighting in giving and sharing okay we are moving on to the sixth one sixth vow yava jeevam satcha vacho asan as long as i live may i speak the truth i think in today's world uh, people lie a lot right we can find uh, more cheaters than the people who speak truth right <laughs> truthful people he will cheat for different reasons for money for uh, comforts uh, for different reasons so buddha always asks us to be truthful people who people uh, whom other people can trust in in today's world people have different issues with trust issues right uh, maybe it could be for market culture it could be for personal reasons it could be for the world it could be for other everything right so buddha always asks us to stay truthful but be smart in speaking the truth sometimes we're going to speak the truth without considering where you are as i mentioned earlier we want to know uh, where we're going to talk the truth when we're going to talk the truth sometimes people are going to fight over the truth the truth is really really uh, it's better sweet right right it's, nobody likes it nobody likes the truth unless we talk about the dhamma here but in your personal conversations if someone brings up the truth you're not happy because truth is something we call the reality reality is always not a good feeling but it's the truth so buddha asks us to make a life where you always uh create truth maintain truth but being smart in making the truth happen okay that's the sixth uh, vow the last one yava jeevam akudanu asan sachepi me kodu uppajjeya kippa meva ma pati vinayanti as long as i live may i be free from anger and if anger should arise in me may i dispel it quickly now this <laughs> it's a really good thing that's the seven uh, wow have you ever heard uh, in the heavens some deities die because they are too angry mm there are a lot of references so devas hate being angry because now when you look at speaking gently and then being free from anger they are two key things uh devas uh, would like to maintain but unfortunately when they are super luxurious uh, when they are so comfortable they have some arguments going on so they can be angry at a small thing that's why uh, they uh, always talk about uh, this thing uh, for the humans if you want to become a deva so you need to uh, lower your anger let's say you angry it's it's no problem because at least there is there's a way to uh, get out of your anger right what is it if anger should arise in you okay in me may i dispel it quickly okay let's say you are angry you can't stop it right but you i mean you we can stop it but in case you can't stop you feel you feel you can't stop it then you you know okay anger arose but i have a way to let it go that's the way we're going to handle it okay so uh, these are the seven uh, vows once again as long as i live may i support my parent the first vow as long as i live may i respect the family elders second vow as long as i live may i speak gently third vow 
as long as I live my live, may I not speak uh, divisively. That's the fourth vow. Wow. As long as I live, may I dwell at, at home with a mind devoid of the stain of stinginess, freely generous, open-handed, delighting in relinquishment, devoted to charity, delighting in giving and sharing. That's the fifth vow. Wow. As long as I live, may I speak the truth. Sixth vow. Wow. As long as I live, may I be free from anger, and if anger should arise in me, may I dispel it quickly. So these, I mean, usually people make vows, uh, mostly when they, before they uh, marry, right? What are the places where people make vows? Look. Places. Yeah, like in, in the life situations, where people make vows. Outside of marriage? Outside of marriage. Like, like other cases? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Like okay. Only, the only vows I made was when I married. Oh, okay. Yeah. Marriage, yeah. And, and and the monastics have to make vows too okay. when they become monastics that right. I'm not breaking this, I'm not breaking, I'm going to I'm going to protect this uh, precept until I die, you know, until I, you know, die or uh, until I don't, uh, until I disrobe, maybe in case they want to disrobe. So uh, there are vows, right? So usually these vows, uh, you know, make sense to someone who really understand, I really want to become the Sakha, the good Sakha, and then they self uh, make these seven vows in their lives. Okay, so there are, there are two more stanzas uh, to um, uh, recap uh, the seven vows. In the past, because when Sakka, Lord of the Devas, was a human being, so he was a human being, he adopted and undertook these seven vows by the undertaking of which he achieved the status of Sakka. Mata Pitti Bharang Jantu, Kule Jetta Pachayanang, Sanhang Sakila Sambhasang, Pesune Yapahayanang. When a person supports his parents and respects the family elders, when his speech is gentle and courteous, and he refrains from divisive words. I mean, take it as a unisex format. I mean, Buddha was talking uh, from a patriarchal society in India. That's why he had to use uh, this male perspective. It doesn't mean that the, 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 the women is excluded in that, okay? Much, okay. When he strives to remove meanness, is truthful and vanquishes anger, the Tawatin Sadevas call him truly a superior person. I think translation has some issues, loose translation, not a superior person, truly a sappurisa. I would call a wise person. Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a wise person, not like superior, inferior. So there are seven vows. Uh, I also want to talk about something. Now in the Buddhist cosmology, Buddha says, I mean, these are textual references, okay? Don't take it as uh, really, really truthful uh, ones because they are textual ones. Buddha says, in the center of the universe, there is a mountain called Mahameru. Now, if you if you understand uh, the the concepts of the evolution of the universe, especially this human world, they they talk about the, the the continents were attached to each other, right? These all the continents, uh, Indian continent, Oceania, uh, Asia, uh, and then. Americas, they all were, were together before, right? So, I mean, Buddha talks about in some suttas, uh, also in Hinduism and Jainism, uh, they all accept. In the center point of this whole universe, there is a big mountain called Maha Meru. Okay, so Mount Meru is the name that was given to this uh, mountain. Uh, and this mountain is tall. Uh, how tall it is it? It's 84,000 yojanas. That means uh, 600,000 600, uh, miles. It's tall. That means uh, uh, 1 million kilometers tall. Okay. Which would be 85 times the Earth's diameter. Okay. Now, why I mention about this Mount Meru is on the top of the the Mount Meru, there's a, there's a top, right? The peak of the Mount Meru is the place where Buddha says the, the heaven called Tavatinsa is located. 
that means where this uh, head god is going is living at the moment uh, i mean some of the information uh, uh, seem to be mythological but some are very textual but anyways buddha talks about this mount meru and then this heaven so if anybody wants to uh, become a sakka so these are the seven vows so they can practice so that they have a chance to become a sakka good sakka any questions what was that about uh, what's the last sakka how does it relate to it, it doesn't um, you're saying that the devas they live on mount meru in the center point of the universe there is a mountain uh, called mount meru yeah. this is accepted in both hinduism and buddhism yeah uh, i don't know people have any scientific researchers <laughs> uh, have found out this place yeah. but the textually speaking they say there is a mountain it's yeah. this mountain is tall like uh, 1 million kilometers tall and at the peak of the mountain is the place where uh, it is uh, supposed to be the uh, the heaven called uh, tavatinsa where the god sakka lives so it's uh, some kinds of devas uh, no i mean the devas in 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 sakka's heaven Okay. There are six heavens, so one heaven, yeah. uh, I would say uh, Tavatinsa heaven, is placed uh, at the peak of the Mount okay. Meru. And is that, of the six heavens, is this one considered better than the other heavens? The, the best. It's the best. The best, yeah. Okay. Oh. It's the best. And the, the, the devas in this heaven, they are, uh, they are mostly, uh, you know, the helpful devas for the humankind. the people who really do good things. Mhm. Yeah. Okay. Have more questions we can then uh close thing. So uh before we uh wrap this up we're going to share all the good karmas with the deities and the uh departed relatives. May all the good karmas be shared by all the departed relatives. Uh past to be uh in the name of all of us may they be happy and peaceful. May they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita hun tu nyate yo. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita hun tu nyate yo. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita hun tu nyate yo. May all the deities share in all these good karmas be being accumulated so far. May they be happy and peaceful. May they also attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ettavata cha ammehi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe deva anumodan tu sabbha sampatti sindhya Ettavata cha ammehi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe bhuta anumodan tu sabbha sampatti sindhya Ettavata cha ammehi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe satta anumodan tu sabbha sampatti sindhya आकाशठाच बुम्मठा दीवानागा महिंदिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रक्कं तुलोक शासनं आकाशठाच बुम्मठा दीवानागा पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रक्कं तुलेसनं आकाशठाच बुम्मठा दीवानागा महिंदिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रक्कं तुमं परन्ति finally let's make a great wish may all the good karmas we've been accumulating so far help all of us to attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 abhivadana silis nichchan vadha pachayino chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukham balang ayurarogya sampatti sagga sampatti bhivach ato nibbana sampatti Iminati saminjato sadhu sadhu sadhu. Sadhu sadhu. Let's respect the Buddha three times for the teachings. <laughs>